What's going on guys? This is Worm again. Couldn't play some Stanley Parable. Um, I picked this game up a couple weeks ago, but meaning to play it. Uh, certain things have come up to where I haven't been able to get on my PC. So, finally getting around to it. Uh, I've already gone through one little ending, but uh, we're going to get back into it. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. Um, I enjoy this little game. It's fun. There's a lot of different endings, so uh, yeah, this should be a pretty good playthrough. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ripping, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Alright. So, I think Stanley's dead, but, yeah, I don't know. Alright. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Alright. There's a door open. This is kind of weird. I didn't, I didn't notice this first time. First time I played through. <coughs> um, so the question is, do we follow what they say, or do we completely just disregard what they said? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Alright, let's go to the one on the left. Obey orders. I've not been this way yet, so I don't really know what to expect. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Who moved my desk? <coughs> All right. Monetize, free to play. No, that's right. All right. Broom closet. Whoa. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. Is there really nothing here? There's got to be something here. Has to be. There was nothing here. No choice to make. <laughs> no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Okay, all right. Fine. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay. Fancy. Store. Executive bathroom. We cannot go in there. All right. Here. Can't go through there either. Huh? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Where is everybody? Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? Mm. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth 
that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. <laughs> okay, so do I do it? Alright, we'll go ahead. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, <laughs> Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Alright, so we're down in a basement now. A big basement, I might add. A freaky basement, I might also add. Rickety elevator is rickety. Another loading screen. Descending right. deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now? when for years it had never occurred to him. Mm. This question would not go unanswered for long. Alright. See, the first time I played through this game, I died. So, I don't know if that's a common thing. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Last time, I went that way when I said escape. And that is not the escape, let me tell you. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. Wow. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? That is a lot of TVs. Big TVs. Imagine gaming on this. That would be so awesome. That would be sick. Alright. Bunch of code. I hate Mondays. Now the monitors jumped to life, wow. their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This is crazy. This mind fire facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Mm. No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? It's narrator. Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. Whoa. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds good to me. But I still think I'm dead, technically. I don't know why I think that. Alright, system so power. Off. Danger. Electric shock. Okay. <clears throat> We're about to get shocked. Or the screen will go black. Blackness. And a 
rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. All right. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Nice. Beat the game. Achievement unlocked. Very cool. Nice. Well, so that was the main story, I guess. That's how it's supposed to all go down. But now what I want to do on these next episodes is completely disregard and just uh, just explore everywhere that we possibly can go and just see what happens, see what we can find. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you did, please leave a like. Uh, if you enjoyed even more, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you guys watching. Have a good one.